Okay, let's pull out some solenoids. Hey, this is Chris from Outbound Terrain, and uh, we're going to pull these solenoids out. This is my um, 88 uh, Jeep Comanche that I'm working on project, and hopefully one of these days I'll get her on the road. Um, it's got the 6 in it. Um, not too much to do, not a lot of rust. Anyways, so what I did is I pulled an old AW4 out of a wrecked XJ. So what we're going to do, I'll use this as kind of a uh, sample. What we'll do is pull out those solenoids. We'll test them and see how they are and hope this helps you out it's pretty easy to do you just got to drop the pan and of course it's inverted but uh i think it'll give you a good example okay here's our old aw4 transmission um used as an example uh, there's 19 pan bolts here um on this pan and I took them all out just to save time. We'll get the last one out here. All right. Last bolt. And I like to uh, put them in a little bag, you know, so I don't lose them. That's what I do because I have a habit of losing stuff for some reason. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Anyways, let's get this pan off. All the bolts are out. Usually get a little edge right here with a screwdriver kind of pry it off it's probably been on there since the transmission was built um so let's pop that off all right there we go and uh there we go huh what the f oh well <clears throat> i don't know if we're going to be using this transmit <laughs> transmission or not i don't know what this is or how long it's been in there but anyways, let's um, let's pull this uh, pull these solenoids off. I'm gonna check this um, filter. Anyways, here's the filter right here. There's a screen in here. It doesn't look very good either. And I'll just pull this off as an example for you. And these are 10 millimeter bolts. Oh. Actually, these are two. These are tens. Makes it kind of handy. And the pan bolts are tens. So just so you know, to get your wrench and do all that stuff. There's three of these guys right here. There, get those off. Good. And actually, there's four of them. Sorry, I lied. All right. One more right in the middle submerged in this gunk or whatever this crap is in here i don't know what it is so <laughs> it doesn't look good though uh, the transmission might be shot but anyway i'll go through it later so there you go makes it a le little easier to get to uh your uh, solenoids there's your solenoids three bolts one two and three and uh, what i'll do is i'll pull them out so i can just show you how the clips come apart you can get the clips off right here but um those are a little tight there's one two and uh your lockup solenoid over here for your overdrive let's get that out actually that might be the lockup usually it's the gold one sorry about that it's been a while since i've been inside one of these there's a wire hitting up again there we go let's get that out get that let's see uh little uh, cork washer for your um 
for your uh, transmission filter. We'll stick that over here. All right, so that's out. Now, these pop out like this. Actually, a better shot here. Actually, that was the wrong bolt, sorry. What was I thinking? It's this one. Okay. It's one of those mornings, I guess I should get my coffee, so. Or more coffee, or whatever. Whatever helps. All right. That's the one I wanted. You know, I live out here in the country in Northern California. And uh, it's amazing how much ambient noise and traffic there is out here, even in the country. Anyways, <laughs> um, so there we go. Let's move that wire. These pop straight out like this. Let's be easy on them because there's a washer right here. There it is. There's one. Um, little clip right here. You can push here. I don't know if you can see that very well. Right there. And kind of hit it in the back with a screwdriver a little bit. There's your plug for your solenoid. There's your solenoid. So that's one. Rinse and repeat on the other ones. I'll set that aside. As it rolls down into the dirt. Okay. <laughs> it's the same thing. We'll pop this out. Just a little lateral movement with a screwdriver. Not too much because there's that rubber O-ring on there. There's that one. Okay. I wonder how good these things are going to be after all that gunk's in there. Anyway, same thing. Let's get it, get it off. There, there's that one. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's kind of redundant here. All right. Get that off. Sometimes they're a little rough to get out of there, but yeah, this thing's probably been in here for 32 years, 30 years maybe. They've never been changed. These are the original factory solenoids okay so there you go what i like to do too is use the lens get some contact cleaner clean them out a little bit just for the hell of it can't hurt right okay so those are out okay got those out we're going to test them i usually clean them up a little bit we'll take them into the shop and test them I'll show you two ways to test them okay so we'll clean those up i want to show you another thing just uh just so you know this is 19 holes this is the original gasket obviously no rtv here original gasket now when you drop this pin you're going to be upside down it separates right here from your dipstick so when you drop your pin the dipstick's going to stay it's bolted up to the firewall up there the dipstick's going to stay and you'll drop the pan just so you know that and there's a little o-ring on there that one doesn't look very good you want to want a new one so it seals it up pretty good and it doesn't blow fluid out of your pipe here around this where it comes together one more thing like i said 19 bolts in here get a new one that's it that's the part number this is felpro i've been using these for a while they work pretty good but if you go to AutoZone or O'Reilly, whatever, and the uh, fabulous technicians at the counter, look at the gasket before you buy it and make sure it has 19 holes. <laughs> and the general shape is the shape that you're going to use. Trust me on this. You know, the professionals at the auto parts shops. Anyways, um, that's it. So let's take these in the garage, in the uh, shop, and we'll test them out. Okay, before we start testing these uh, AW4 solenoids, I wanted to go over uh, kind of a diagram of uh, what we're going to do here. And it might help explain kind of what we're going to do and make it a little bit easier. This is out of the ATSG AW4, the official uh, factory repair manual. And it's pretty cool. It's got a lot of stuff in it. But anyways, so what you're going to do, you got your ohmmeter right here, obviously, turned to ohms. Um, and this is the old uh, analog one. And we'll test with both types of uh, ohm meters because you might not have the digital one. But anyways, um, here's the clip wire terminal that goes in the case right here where the red probe goes off your ohm meter. So you want to touch that there. Um, at the same time, you touch uh, this uh, black probe to the ground or where it bolts onto your transmission case. 
So that's the ground. So there's not an extra ground wire here that goes anywhere. It goes uh, right here to the case it grounds up. And you'll see it um, when we get out and work on the unit itself. Other than that, you want to test this. And just for reference, manual says you want between 11 and 15 ohms when you're checking your uh, solenoids. That's the range right there. If it's below or above, you've got a resistance problem and you're gonna to have to change out that solenoid. So real easy test and very accurate. And it's uh, something that uh, hopefully will help you out here, a visual kind of uh, presentation. So just real quick while we're in here, the solenoid wires obviously, uh, there's the connectors. Um, it's, uh, they start here and kind of branch off here, bifurcate right here. And uh, that's basically what we're going to do, what we're going to test. Okay, let's get started. Anyways, let's test some solenoids. Hey, uh, so, here's the old analog uh, ohm meter. Nice, uh, it works okay. Digital works better. But anyways, hope you can see that lighting is not the best. Anyways, let's go ahead and turn to ohms. Um, so we're on ohms. I'm on RX1. We got RX10 and RX100. RX1 seems to work better on this one. So a lot of uh, interfaces on some of the other ohm meters are probably different. But anyways, so let's test this, see where we're at resistance wise. So here's our solenoid right here. There's your little clip in there. You see it? That's where your wire connector goes on. That's a little actuator inside there. It goes up and down, so the mechanical closes and opens the valve. And there's where we're gonna ground, and that's where it bolts up in there to your case. Anyways, so let's do this. Um, what we can do, we'll take our uh, black probe, and we'll stick that right there. And there's our clip, okay? So I'm gonna touch the red up to this clip right here, like that and our ohm meter's going off right now and it looks like we are at it's about 12.5 13 ohms right now so we're right in the range between 11 and 15 so you can see that one is right where we want it i don't know if you can see the meter very well but um yeah eh, 12 to 13 right in there so that's how you check with the uh, analog uh, ohm meter here. And we'll check it with a digital just for the heck of it. What do you think? All right, let's do it. Okay, digital ohm meter. Nice. You guys need to get one of these. This is the way to go. Um, if you're going to be checking electrical system on your Comanche, um, this is a godsend. Trust me, I know. Anyways, um, let's see here. We're off right now, let's go to ohms. Ohms, come on man, there we go. All right, so we're on ohms, so same concept, man. We're gonna touch our black to our ground, just like show. And um, let's touch our, uh, our red to our uh, clip here. All right, 13.6 ohms. Check it again, just in case. All right, 13.6. So we're in the range between 11 and 15. So this, this is actually a lockup solenoid. This one works great. Now what we can do is go down the line and test the rest of them. That's that one. That one's bueno, that's good. Let's check this guy. All right, same thing. Nothing's different, they're all the same. This one's a different color. Actually these two, the two silver ones are the same, the lockup solenoid is a little bit different. Anyways, there we go. Same thing, clip. 13.7, a little bit better. Still in the range. I always do it twice just to make sure. 13.8, 13.7, right in there. So, like I said, I just test the other one, same way. See what you got, resistance wise. And if they're uh, in range, man, you're good to go. And it's pretty simple, and that's about it. Um, what we'll do next is we'll check mechanically to see if those are working. You'll hear a click and some mechanical action inside. So we'll do that next. Bear with me. 
Okay, so this is the second way I test these, and I test these just for the mechanical aspect. We um, ohm them out, and they seem to be doing okay with the right voltage and resistance. So this is the second test, and I do both. I mean, you could probably just do the resistance test, but I want to check for mechanical movement and hear a click in these things. So what I have here is some alligator clips, positive and a negative, of course. So what I'm going to do is I'll hook the negative up first to the negative terminal on the battery, okay? Now, I'm going to hook up uh, the positive and don't let the end of this touch anything else. <laughs> don't ground it on anything or it's going to spark. And it's no bueno. And also safety glasses will probably be a good idea when you do this just for safety. But anyway, so let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to get the first one here. Now, I'm holding this positive. <laughs> all right, so we're all grounded good there. So same thing. Um, just hook this guy up here. Clip. Wherever the hole is, that's where it grounds with the case. That's your ground. Now, here's your positive. This is live. Live on camera. Anyways, um, you see a little clip in there? So we're going to test this. I'm going to put this on this little uh, little clip, and we'll see what happens. Hear that? So obviously that one's good. I can hear mechanical motion in there. So that plunger's working. Um, that's one. And just so you know, these two silvers are the same. They have the same number. Um, right here, I don't know if you can see it or not. There's the number, the solenoid number. And they're the same. Same number, so these are the same, just so you know, so you can in sequence if you kind of mix up where they went. And the lockup solenoid's different. This guy right here, and actually that's an ASIN, so that's the original solenoid that came from the factory. Pretty cool, meant for that transmission. So hopefully this one's good. I like to keep this one. I really would. So let's test it again. Hook up our ground, clip that on. There we go. And now we're going to check this one. So let's see. Beautiful. Nice and loud click. I don't like to hold it on there. I don't want to get too much voltage through here. You know, um, it's probably not a good idea. This is a quick test. Test them. All right, that one's good. And this is the last one. So let's check the last one. See how we're doing here. So we got all three, and if they all work, we're good to go. Resistance is good. We tested that earlier with the ohm meter. Okay. Good. Well, guess what? They all work, which is a good thing. And that's how you test them with your car battery. This is my uh, Comanche here. I'm just using that battery to do this. And that's how you do it. So that's it, guys. How to take out your uh, EW4 solenoids in your XJ or... Uh, Comanche. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video and I put these out for you guys. These are things you could do at home. That wasn't as hard. You don't have to take this to a transmission shop or any of that crap. Just do it yourself. Um, other than that, that's it. Be safe out there. It's a crazy world. There's a lot of stuff going on that's not good. Um, be safe. I'm just happy I kind of live out of the urban areas. I live uh, way up in the foothills of Northern California, kind of almost to Tahoe. I kind of live near uh, the Rubicon trail which is closed it's in the el dorado el dorado national forest they've closed off complete access to the forest up there so we can't wheel up there or do anything um god wentworth springs airport flat campground all those uh, sierra destinations for wheelers up here in northern california are all closed which sucks so hopefully the fires will go down uh, big fire up there it's called the fork fire um so they're trying to get that contained other than that, uh, you take care and like I said, be safe out here. This is Chris uh, with Outbound Terrain and you guys have a great day and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.